In the panel, you mentioned that um, you thought of this as like a science fiction show, um, but it also you know it's being sold as a Romeo and Juliet tale. So how do you think that, what the, what's going to be the balance between you know a science fiction mythology and a Romeo and Juliet romance? Well, I think you, know, you need both because you can't just, a pure sci-fi isn't as interesting if you don't have the, the characters, and, and for me, I love the allegories of it, like, I'm a huge Battlestar Galactica fan, and what I love about that show was that it wasn't just a pure sci-fi show, it was always about those characters, and then there was the allegories of the world, and that's what we're trying to do with this show, too. It's a cool sci-fi show where you're going to have the spaceship, and you're going to have the cool holographic bulletin board because we're in the year 2024, but at the end of the day, it's always going to come back to our characters, to our Romeo and Juliet story, and to the message of bringing these two worlds together, and what does that mean? So, so we, we have, that's why we think about it. Can you talk about the differences between the Sector and Emery's world? Because they're both very different places. Yes. We think about, and you guys chime in if you want, um, the Sector is very, it has this sort of industrial government. I mean, everything that they have has been given to them by the government. So you'll get to see what Roman's pod looks like. And we're really going to be expanding that world yeah, a lot sure. in the series, but both with sets and meeting new characters that live yeah. in the sector. And when you're walking through the market, it should almost feel like you're on another planet. Like, you're actually getting to see, like, they've made this world their own. Even if it's just the things that they're using as instruments and the food that they're making, the things the that they're doing. Yeah, the gardening. Like, they're really making their own world there. And then, and it's a world that feels unfamiliar, I, I think, to us. And then when you are in Emery's home, it's a very warm, sort of traditional family home that are all of the comforts of human life that I think that, that we all can access. But in the sector, it's it's a little jarring because it's not what we think of as home, but it's what they think of as home. Though one of the fun things for us is because the show takes place 10 years in the future, we do get to play with, it's not just your traditional suburban school or home, there's, there's these little techie flourishes of, you know, the way the cafeteria works and the way her world sort of operates. So for us, it's so fun because... And, and like the our production designer and prop guys, it's not like we, we could always innovate it a little bit to give a taste of what things might be like in the next you know, ten years. What kind of like technical special effects um, within that same subject will we expect to see? Like that, like from like an alien standpoint, like spaceship weapons or anything along those lines, or they work more wide, wide open. Wide open. Wide yeah. open. In, in our mind's eye, I mean, we, we keep saying this to people, and it's really true. It's like in our mind's eye, this show starts in this small, semi-small place of it's about an integration program in Baton Rouge. Yeah, 10 years after an alien crash landing, but really, knock on wood, in season, you know, two, three, four, five, six, that will just be the starting point of what's a an epic story, you know, that has to do with, you know, again, we're going to be even in the season exploring, like, other governments and their response to the fact that there's aliens living in the United States, like, and they're, they're quarantined and shouldn't all governments have a say in it, and then, does this mean, is this a harbinger that more are coming, or what has NASA done to respond to this, so we want to be open, the storytelling's going to open up, and from that, gadgets, effects, all that stuff are just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Can you talk about how the Atrians are different from humans, like, you know, they've got the marking, we're going to start to explore what their culture actually looks like, the makeup of it. We'll learn that they have a caste system, that there are actually four different tribes within the Atrian race, and they all have their own very specific purpose, and they have their own very potentially specific powers within the race. <laughs> um, so that that's, that's one thing we'd like to explore, and also what their planet looked like, and what are the things that were important to them there that they brought with them. Um, that's, that's one of the things that we're, we definitely want to explore because we know that coming off of the pilot, it's, there's a great interest in wanting just to know more about them. It's not like Vampire Diaries is a great show, but people have seen a lot of vampire shows and they understand, they know that vampire mythology. We're getting to really make up our own. And, and speaking of which, one of the fun things is 
the, the, the language that they speak. Is, did you guys watch Game of Thrones? Mm-hmm. Is anybody the guy that created Dothraki, the language that they speak, created Sandiv, which is our language? Michael Peter? David Peterson. David Peterson. Yeah. And so we have a whole language, which is so much fun. <laughs> but first, when, when Meredith was writing the script, we were trying to write the alien like, language. Right? Plugity, 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 clack. Yeah. And then it was like, nanu, nanu. let's put this in the, exactly. Let's put this yeah. in the hand of a professional yeah. language specialist. So, yeah. I was curious about the decision to have um, Emery coming back to school for the first time in several years, four years. And, um, you know, instead of having her just be an established student, yeah. uh, how did that come about to, to make her, she's almost in some ways alien herself to her own. Exactly, yeah. That's... We wanted to find a way to parallel her experience with the atriums. They feel like the other coming into school for the first time. And she, having been a girl who was sick her whole life and then in the hospital for the last four years, she's very much an other walking into school that first day and kind of looking around at all the different groups like, I don't understand how where I fit in here. And so it, it just and at the same time, we didn't want to just make her the new girl in town. Like it felt like we've seen that so many times before. This was sort of an interesting thing that we felt like we had never seen, where she but very real, like the girl that's been out of school because she's been in the hospital. Plus, it gave us the opportunity to have her have this sick friend Julia that then that plays in the end. And we're very happy the day we came up with that. <laughs> I can't wait to see where the Julia character goes after. That's a big, what happened. Yeah. they got very cool, very lots of cool stuff, stuff coming up. She's coming back to school. Yeah. yeah. She's healed up. And That's all I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> I had a question about the cypher. Um, was her friend completely healed of all that, uh, all of her sickness, or was her to her? And then also, um, uh, now that they know that cypher can heal the earth, whatever, will that be available to like a mass, like all the hospitals? Well, it's funny because you're bringing up a lot of the questions that the agents themselves believe that the government will, you know, find very intriguing and want to blow the secret out. The moment you hear an alien race has a magic herb, they can cure cancer. You're going to be all over that, and we're going to discover that the agents, you know, have their reasons for keeping it secret. I mean, first of all, it's self-preservation. The moment, you know, you're the you're the She's outsider. Like, I keep that a secret. That, you know, <laughs> that's right. You know, the, you, you just you just know, like whether it's pharmacy or like you know, big government is going to have you like experimented on just like that. So there's self preservation and it's also this you know basis of distrust between the Adrians and the humans. So we'll see like you know how far they get you know, down that path. It's a big part share. of the first couple episodes after the pilot. Like That's it right. becomes the whole thing of Julia wondering how she got cured so quickly, then is this secret gonna get out, is it not gonna get out? What are the stakes? Right. What's you know it's yeah. really we right into it right away. Yeah, what are the effects of these what are the effects of these um, you know herbs are and, right are there side effects yeah, because yeah. Julia Yes, she was cured, but what else happened to her system because of it? You know? Um, it, you know, as you're talking about this and you're saying, well, you know, we've seen this before, or we've seen certain things before, like, how how often and how focused were you in the development of all this of saying, no, 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 that is something that is similar, even slightly to something else, and then trying to go in another direction? It's come up a few times. Um, just, you know, you want to... There, there's been a lot of... You know, high school supernatural sort of drama, both in television and movies. And obviously. Romeo and Juliet. And Romeo and Juliet that you want to avoid. You know, true, blood, true Blood has been one thing that we have been very cognizant of not repeating. Obviously, we're all big fans of Roswell, but you know, the show is so different. About Twilight. Yeah, the show is so different from Roswell because there was a secret that they were aliens. And ours, it's been you know, for 10 years they've been. Aliens. And to us, it's like, you know, sometimes, like, even the moment, like, when they were holding hands and, and this and that, the audience was, it's like, some Sometimes these things that you've seen a version of them before, it's it's fun that you're like it's it feels it's why you love these kind of things. And then well, I think at the core, a show about you know an immigration program in that's, that's you know again a metaphor for the 1950s South or whatever you want to that it's just that has never been done before. So the more we keep coming back to that as something that is completely fresh and opens up new avenues of storytelling, all those the, the little touchstones of things you're used to are fine because. Because it's it's in this world that has never been explored. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.